Gambling has plagued the video game industry. It seems like almost every AAA game has gambling mechanics in there. Gears of War 4, Overwatch, CSGO, Call of Duty, PES, FIFA, the list goes on. It has almost become the norm in gaming now to feature a slot machine commonly known as supply drops, loot boxes or packs. Usually you will have an in-game currency that will be earned through simply playing the game and in some games rewarded bonus currency for accomplishing certain things in the game. The currency can be used to open these loot boxes where a completely random set of items will be rewarded to you. The player will have the option to buy more loot boxes or packs with real money. The game will usually only give enough currency, essentially free spins, to give you a taster. The goal is to give you just about enough for free, so that you have the urge and temptation to spend real money on these loot boxes. This is very much the same sort of tactics found in bookmakers and casinos. In a technical sense, the player will open a box where a random number generator will decide what items they'll win on that box opening, which in gambling terms is a spin. The way loot boxes or packs etc are opened is the exact same method as a real life slot machine would. Opening a pack or a loot box is essentially a slot machine spin. Winning rare items from these loot boxes or packs gives off that same exhilarating buzz as winning on the slot machine or roulette. The complete unknown and suspense you get from opening a pack gives off that same feeling as spinning on a slot machine or eagerly waiting for that ball to stop on the roulette wheel. Gambling has an effect on the brain. Being able to straight up buy items doesn't feel as rewarding. Why do you think many people use those claw machines to win toys for their family or themselves? They could quite easily straight up buy the toy from a shop, but instead would rather play. Some even become stubborn and end up spending more money than what the toy even sells for. Most gamers collectively have a threshold on where a line shouldn't be crossed. Most gamers are accepting of these loot boxes provided they only contain cosmetic items only and do not feature anything that changes the gameplay. To put this into a black and white perspective, gameplay changing loot boxes are the equivalent of having to gamble on a slot machine to win the ability to watch the latest episode of your favourite TV show. Cosmetic only loot boxes are the equivalent of being able to watch an episode that you have already seen, but this time the characters are wearing different, cooler costumes. Now although I can agree with the stance on it's okay if it's cosmetic only to an extent, because from a personal perspective it does not change my game in any way, I still think it's unethical. Firstly, cosmetic only boxes could be a gateway to items that do affect the gameplay by getting gamers to first accept the less extreme cosmetic only gambling philosophy. Secondly, the impact of introducing gambling into video games could have a detrimental impact on society in years to come. The most worrying thing of all is how many young kids are playing these video games and investing into these gambling mechanics. I believe that this could potentially create a new generation of gambling addicts. These kids that are 11 years old opening packs today could be down a casino or bookies 10 years later gambling real money and enticed to do so because of the gambling philosophy they adopted through these big AAA video games. Video games could be conditioning the next generation to gambling. As someone who has worked in the gambling industry in the past, I have seen what gambling can do to people. I can understand why it's so addictive and how easy it is to lose control. Gambling is essentially a business strategy that preys on our human weaknesses. Gambling can be fun, but it can also be very dangerous, hence why there are so many laws and regulations in place set by the government. This is to stop gamblers losing control and not allowing bookmakers and casinos to profit off people's weaknesses. The problem is these same laws and regulations do not apply to video games. The Gambling Commission in the UK enforced casinos and bookmakers to induct fair business practices. The Gambling Commission makes sure that gambling is conducted in a fair and open way. Through laws and regulations, they are making sure that the vulnerable and children are not being exploited by gambling. 
The biggest question is why are there no regulations to protect gamers and consumers of these gambling business practices in video games? Let's just quickly look at how people get addicted to gambling and what effect it has on the brain. Dopamine is a chemical in your brain that releases during pleasurable situations. When it releases, it makes you feel good. It's known as the reward chemical. When you get likes on your status, when you beat a game on the hardest difficulty, when you pass an exam, when you finish creating something, you feel satisfied. Dopamine is released. Dopamine is also released when you win at gambling. Here's a quick study on your brain on slot machines. This study is based on an experiment giving juice to monkeys and then compares it to gambling. So this is a direct quote from a gambling study that I looked into. At first, the neurons don't get excited until the juice is delivered. The cells are reacting to the actual reward. However, once the animal learns that the light always precedes the arrival of juice, the same neurons begin firing at the sight of the light instead of the reward. Schwartz calls these cells prediction neurons, since they are more interested in predicting rewards than in the rewards themselves. These predictions are a crucial source of learning since the monkey constantly compares its expectations of juice with what actually happens. For example, if the light is flashed but the juice never arrives, then the monkey's dopamine neurons stop firing. This is known as the error signal. The monkey is disappointed and begins to change its future predictions. However, if the monkey receives an unexpected reward, as in the juice arrives without warning, then the dopamine neurons get extremely excited. A surprising treat registers much larger than an expected one. A reward that's unpredictable typically counts three or four times as much, Schwartz says. Games of chance prey on this neural system. Consider for example the slot machine. You put in a coin, you pull the lever, the reels start to whir. Eventually, the machine settles on its verdict, chances are you lost money. But think about the slot machine from a perspective of your dopamine neurons. Whenever you win some money, the reward activates those brain cells intent on anticipating future rewards. These neurons want to predict the patterns inside the machine to decode the logic of luck. Yet here's the catch. Slot machines can't be solved. They use random number generators to determine their payout. There are no patterns to decipher. There is only a little microchip churning out arbitrary digits. At this point, our dopamine neurons should just turn themselves off. The slot machine is a waste of mental energy. But this is not what happens. Instead of getting bored by the haphazard payouts, our dopamine neurons become obsessed. The random rewards of gambling are much more seductive than a more predictable reward cycle. When we pull the lever and win some money, we experience a potent rush of pleasurable dopamine precisely because the reward was so unexpected. The clanging coins and flashing lights are like a surprising square of juice. The end result is that we are transfixed by the slot machine, riveted by the fickle nature of its payouts. Now that was the quote, I have the link in the description if you want to see that full study. Now back to my point, this could very well be the exact reason why it's such a buzz to try and win a toy rather than straight up buy it where you know you're guaranteed to get the item. This could be the same reason why people are much more inclined to buy in loot boxes for certain cosmetics rather than straight up buying cosmetics like you could before this loot box phenomenon hit gaming. I believe pack or loot box openings have the same effects as slot machines. Although this is just an opinion, I really think psychologists should research the effect pack openings have on the brain and compare them to slot machine gambling. These effects on the brain and same feelings you get in real life gambling are very relatable with video game loot boxes and pack openings. Once you get invested into their system on a game you enjoy, it takes genuine willpower to resist not spending money. The same kind of willpower to resist not putting on another bet. Now I want to turn the attention towards two of the biggest AAA giants in gaming, Call of Duty and FIFA. 
which may or may not surprise you, are also arguably the biggest offenders when it comes to gambling mechanics in their games. Call of Duty, one of the biggest shooters in the world, has got more and more aggressive at emphasising their games on gambling. Just like I explained before, they give you free loot boxes, known as supply drops in Call of Duty. You can earn in-game currency through playing the game, however, the earn rate is very, very slow, and this is so that you actually go out and buy supply drops with real money. Call of Duty publisher Activision created a separate currency from the in-game earned currency called COD Points. COD Points are purchased with real money and cannot be earned. COD Points are used to buy more supply drops. Essentially the aim is that you open some supply drops for free, get hooked on the gambling formula and go out and spend real money on COD Points so that you can open more supply drops. Here is where things cross the line however. So as I mentioned earlier about cosmetic only loot boxes, when well Call of Duty they actually have items in supply drops that are not only cosmetics and actually change the gameplay. They put in new weapons. This changes the game significantly enough for many COD players to solely open supply drops to unlock all of the new weapons so that they can experience something new. Even if you do not want to spend any money on supply drops or even open any supply drops at all, you're missing out on the new gameplay experiences by not taking part. In order to experience the new weapons, you have to open supply drops, there is no way around it. In other words, you have to take part in gambling to try and win the new content. Imagine if a new episode of Game of Thrones came out, but in order to watch it, you had to gamble tons of money to try and win it. Imagine if you couldn't straight up buy the episode of Game of Thrones, you couldn't just pay for it and watch it, you had to gamble more money than one episode is worth just to watch the new episode. Or in comparison, if you use all the in-game currency without spending money, imagine if you had to watch the same episode of Game of Thrones three times just to get free spin to get a very slim chance to win the ability to watch the new episode. You can imagine that outrage amongst fans. The crazy thing about this however, is after all the controversy clears, much like what happened with the introduction of supply drops in Call of Duty, the diehard loyal fans will do anything to get the new content. If you had to gamble to win the ability to watch a new Game of Thrones episode, the diehard Game of Thrones fans will pay up. They would eventually be willing to gamble their money to win it. Then they would talk about it, and then the rest will feel like they're missing out and will eventually join in too. Before you know it, it's become the norm. Now this sounds ludicrous, and it is an extreme analogy, but this is pretty much what is going on in mainstream gaming right now. This is what is going on in Call of Duty. Now you might suggest that in the Game of Thrones example, you could always pirate the episode, but what if there was no way to? There is no way as far as I know to cheat the system in these AAA games. You can't pirate the new content that's locked behind the gambling paywall. Not only that, but the game is constantly advertising discounts on supply drops and new weapons that are in the supply drops with pop-ups on the screen in the menu and a slideshow in the corner of supply drop advertisements. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, the game did not launch with supply drops, they were introduced later. When they were introduced, upon booting the game, you were taken to the supply drop screen and actually forced to open a free supply drop before you could proceed with your game. Now I don't know about you, but that seems very shady and morally wrong to me. They're forcing someone to gamble so that they are more likely to be drawn in and enticed to invest into their gambling system. It's almost like the gatekeepers to your favourite theme park now forcing you to take a free sample of highly addictive meth in order to get into the theme park. On top of all of this, on two Call of Duty titles, the supply drops actually started off as cosmetic only and Activision and the developers said it would remain that way only to a few months later go back on their word and introduce new gameplay changing items into the supply drops clearly to get more people to buy supply drops to cheaply boost their revenue. Well what about this for clear evidence that gambling is addictive and is in video games too? Activision Blizzard made $3.6 billion last year in 2016 on supply drops and loot boxes for Call of Duty and Overwatch. It is no secret that huge amounts of underage kids play Call of Duty. 
The reason why gambling requires you to be over 18 and 21 in other countries is because a person under the age of 18 is usually more naive and hasn't fully developed yet and is therefore very easily exploited and vulnerable to gambling addiction. Now the one saving grace for Call of Duty is that technically the game is certified as an 18 plus. However, let's talk about FIFA then, a game that is a free plus game, a game where young children are legally allowed to buy the game. This is where things get very dodgy. FIFA as far as I know is the pioneer of having gambling mechanics in their game. They were certainly the first major franchise to do it. In one of the major game modes in FIFA, known as FIFA Ultimate Team or FOOT for short, they have created a genius concept. The goal of this is to create a dream team of all your favourite superstars in world football. This idea I feel like is very much inspired from the craze of Pokemon cards and football stickers. The thing that makes this so genius and so powerful is that because this applies to your video game, this has so much more meaning and depth. The significance is much higher than simply owning Pokemon cards. You could technically play with the Pokemon cards, but it's a lot easier to boot up a game of FIFA, play someone online, than it is finding someone to play a game of Pokemon with, with cards. I mean, who? I don't even know who does that. Do you know anyone that actually used to play with the Pokemon cards? Add to the fact that these Ultimate Team cards are of course based off real players, a real sport, and you have even more enticement there. EA even came up with the idea to start releasing limited edition cards every week. These were improved versions with increased stats of players that had a great game in real football. So if Harry Kane scored twice in his last game in real life, you could damn well bet he'll receive a limited edition card. These are known as inform cards, selections of players getting forms via a team of the week. So when I was a kid, you'd ask your parents if you could buy a Pokemon card pack, you might get one a week, and then your friend or that rich kid in school would come in with tons of Pokemon cards and was spoiled to having tons of packs. You might be a little bit jealous, but that's as far as it went. We didn't have social media or YouTube with huge YouTube icons back then. What we have now is massive YouTubers that record themselves opening literally hundreds of packs where they have spent thousands of pounds on them. These are huge role models for a huge amount of kids. An entire generation are watching and aspiring to be these YouTubers. It's free promotion for EA and these kids will be easily influenced to want to go out and spend the kind of money these YouTubers spend on huge amounts of packs. Once they grow up to have a job, They'll have the ability to spend ridiculous money on gambling their money on opening packs. Take it a step further, they'll have the gambling philosophy ingrained into them, meaning it'll be so easy for them to take it further and start gambling for real money. From watching YouTubers gamble huge amounts of money and then doing it themselves on FIFA, they'll be more inclined to do the same with real money gambling. When I was 18, I actually personally knew a few people at that age that spent all of their wages on foot packs, which is an age where you're young enough to be engrossed into the YouTube FIFA Ultimate Team phenomenon, but old enough to also earn money. Although on FIFA, there are other modes you can play that have all the content unlocked without you having to spend money, it doesn't change the fact that there's arguably millions of underage players gambling money in FIFA Ultimate Team. On top of that, FIFA 18 will feature Legends on all platforms and have added a huge number of versions of Legends exclusive to FIFA Ultimate Team. Want to play as your favourite player of all time who's retired? Well, you better cough up a huge amount of cash because that's the only way you're going to be able to play as them. Now FIFA Ultimate Team does have a transfer market where you can trade your players for coins aka the in-game currency in the game. This does make things a bit fairer in some ways to other games because you can acquire any specific item or player that you want through simply playing the game. However, all of the top tier players are nearly impossible to get without spending real money on FIFA points to open packs. Opening packs is by far the most effective way of legitimately earning coins in FIFA. Now without the odds that most of these games do not show, I can't accurately give you an average estimate of how long it would take to earn the best items via packs, and even if they did, 
it would still all be hypothetical because it's a slot machine. However, with the fact that FIFA Ultimate Team has a trading market, I can provide you with an average estimate on how long it would take to get the best players in foot without spending any money. So as of now, with FIFA 18 very close to launch, the prices for players on FIFA Ultimate Team on FIFA 17 will be the lowest they will ever be as players get ready to migrate to FIFA 18. The prices being at the lowest point means this is the easiest point to get the best players in FIFA 17. So if we look at the highest rated player in foot right now, Ronaldo has a 99 rated card and goes for about 4.2 million coins. Messi also has a 99 rated card and goes for a similar price right now. On average, you'll earn around 500 coins per match. It will range from about 300 to 600 coins depending on the result and the team you play. You can apply temporary coin boosts and you do get bonuses for winning tournaments, but they are very few and far in between that it won't significantly make enough difference to make this estimate incorrect. So if we go by the usual average of 500 coins per match, it will take you 8,400 matches to earn 4.2 million coins. That's excluding the fact that you need to spend coins on renewing players' contracts so that your players can play more games. So each match is 6 minutes a half, meaning a match will be a minimum of 12 minutes. Usually they last for longer when goals are scored from the celebration cutscenes and replays. On average, games are about 15 minutes. So if we go by that, 8,400 matches equals 126,000 minutes. That's 2,100 hours. That's 87 days of match time. A full-time 40 hours a week job without any holiday is 1,920 hours a year, or 80 days a year. This means you would need to play FIFA more often than you would be at work. Bear this in mind as well that this is the cheapest the best player will ever be. Usually they peak around 7 million coins. Not only is this ridiculous, but earning 4.2 million coins if you go to school or work is practically impossible without spending money. Even if you spend, say, £100 on packs, you have to be really lucky to actually significantly shorten the time it will take to get to 4.2 million coins, and it's pretty much the odds are impossible to ever land a 99 rated Messi or Ronaldo. In a nutshell, You'll have to spend a serious amount of money to even have a chance of getting higher tiered players. You can imagine why so many people spend money gambling to try and win players that take thousands of hours to gain through game time. Creating a dream team of your favourite players, playing and trading with other players online, progressing your team and collecting players is a genius and incredibly fun concept. The concept itself is fantastic. It's the aggressive monetization of the mode that is becoming a huge problem. The whole system heavily favors EA and barely favors the consumer at all. Not only do they have unfair gambling systems with ridiculously low odds, it's also ludicrous how much time you have to put in to have a desirable team. On top of that, it's very arguable that you're at a severe disadvantage by having a weaker team than players with better teams with better players who have spent money. Ultimately, this forces the player's hand into spending a lot of money on gambling for a better team. With constant new informed cards, constant promotions from YouTubers and EA to open packs, and with zero laws to protect children and people that are vulnerable to the gambling philosophy, this makes foot a very immoral business practice. The huge success of FIFA Ultimate Team, I believe started this trend to have gambling in games. Every single publisher and developer now wants a piece of that pie. Now I'm not saying that these gambling mechanics must be completely abolished, some people enjoy it and it's unfortunately a viable business strategy now. One positive that can be concluded from this is that these gambling microtransactions do potentially pave the way for future bigger content such as map packs for free. They also significantly help fund for the next game. However, 
currently there are no rules and regulations that protect people like in real gambling. There are no clear ways to even know if the odds and mechanic is even fair. You can easily be taken advantage of because there are no laws against it. The obvious problem in many of these titles such as Call of Duty and FIFA is that from a gamer's point of view you are at a disadvantage against other players online by not spending money. If players can get to the better players or weapons to use against you by spending money, it's seen as an unfair advantage. The term commonly used is pay to win. Some gamers will be turned off, but other gamers, which commonly can be younger players, will force them to invest their time and money into gambling systems that are in place and eventually become hooked. I believe that there should be laws to prevent children from gambling in video games. I believe there should be precautions and similar regulations that you get in real gambling. I also believe that the way it currently is for most games, the system is very unbalanced and too heavily favours the company and not the consumer. We don't even know how fair it is because there's no actual odds on the drop rate of the items. Or in a gambling term, there's no win rate percentage odd. In real gambling, it is a legal requirement to show the success rate percentage or odds on each game. This again is proof that there are no gambling regulations in video games. The Chinese government recently however acknowledged this and have apparently made it a legal requirement for game companies to display drop rates and odds in China. There doesn't appear to be any public information about what the drop rates are in China as of now however. I would personally love if all game publishers and developers completely dropped microtransactions and gambling mechanics, but let's be honest here, that's just not realistic when it's such a huge money maker for them. So why not tone it down? These systems need to be much fairer and I mean much more. In order to own the best items in COD or FIFA, you genuinely need to spend thousands of pounds or put thousands of hours to guarantee that you own everything. Bear in mind that these are franchises that release every year meaning your game becomes obsolete after a year. I believe the government both in the UK and from other nations in the world need to take a serious look at gambling in video games and intervene. Someone needs to do something about it before it gets out of hand. It's already starting to get out of hand and I can only see it getting worse until someone puts a stop to it. I hope you enjoyed, if you did, please leave it a thumbs up and please, for the sake of gaming, for the sake of kids, if you're a parent, whatever it is, please, please feel free to share this to as many people as possible because people need to get wind of this, especially non-gamers that have no idea this is going on, especially to parents that have no idea that their children are being exploited to, to these gambling mechanics. Please, please, I advise you please to share this out if you agree and get as much people to view this as possible. I hope you enjoyed, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I will see you on my next video.